After Thursday's State Infrastructure Board's decision about 526, I sat down exclusively with Dana Beach of the Coastal Conservation League for the special edition of Quintess Post House. Dana, it is so good to see you again. Thank you. It's great to see you, Quinn. I really appreciate this. Uh, you know, we were exchanging emails yesterday. You told me, because I wanted to do an interview with you this morning, but you were in Melton and you came back to work here. Tell me, how are you? How, how, how are you? I am, I am busy, but I'm good because I had a wonderful Memorial Day in the mountains. That is so awesome. Yeah. I didn't really get back to the obvious right here. And you sent an email to a lot of your followers on yesterday, and you said the following quote, Folks, this was a ban of week for transportation in South Carolina. On Thursday, after more than a decade of blood, toll, sweat, and tears on the part of concerned citizens and the Conservation League, the State Trans Transportation Infrastructure Bank, STIG, voted to withdraw funds for the I-526 extension to Johns Island. The demise of this project, which has become the most expensive highway in South Carolina's history, has the potential to launch a fresh, new discussion about transportation planning. And I'm wondering, is there a part of you that says, I told you so? Well, I think always, yeah. You know, we've been trying to make the point for now a decade right. that there were alternatives that were less expensive, that could be implemented faster, that didn't have the negative impacts of 526. And, um, you know, this is all part of the democratic process okay. where we, there were some people who didn't agree with that and the project moved on and on and became more and more expensive. And now I think it's finally at, uh, reached a point where there's a broad realization that it's just not the right project for this region. And you also said in that particular letter, quote, it is difficult to say something about 526 that hasn't already been said. It was a boom double force down the collective throats of Charleston County by politicians willing to go to almost any length to build it. So what else have we not heard about 526? Well, I think the most important thing is that we skipped about 10 years of time that we could have been thinking more creatively about how to solve the problems that we face. Right. Not only now, but as we have more growth, we will have more traffic congestion right. unless, we're, unless we're aggressively engaged in coming up with solutions. And the solutions aren't enormous new bridges that cost a billion dollars. Right. They're, they're smaller scale things, not as sexy, not ribbon cutting opportunities necessarily, but things that will make the community function, the neighborhood street system function better. Mm -hmm. The sort of work that is really already being talked about, West Ashley, getting more um, jobs and more uh, destinations out there so that people don't have to drive into Charleston right. every day. Um, mm -hmm. it's a, there's a big part of this that's a land use strategy. We need to be smarter about how we how we construct our neighborhoods. Yes. And you also said this too. Fundamentally, the debate over 526 exper expressed disparate visions of lo the low country. One can see the region connected by a modern system of highways linking homes, jobs, stores, and schools with only superficial concern for history, beauty, and indigenous culture. The other value of authenticity, community, and environmental integrity and was conscious of the potential for the large-scale public projects to cause large-scale irreversible damage. Tell me, what's your vision of the low country? Well, I think one thing that is, to me, seems obvious, but maybe it's not as obvious to everybody, okay. is that the reason people love this place is, not, is that it's not like anywhere else. It's not like Charlotte, no disrespect right. to Charlotte. Right. I, I grew up in Columbia, it's yeah. not like Columbia. It has a deep history, it's got a beauty about it, it has um, an exciting uh, vibrancy about it that, that is embedded in its, in its history and its environment. And so to the extent that we, we build new development and we have new people moving in, we need to do it in a way that is respectful of those things because that's, in many cases, that's why they're coming in the first place. And it certainly when people arrive here, that's why they stay here and what they get excited about. Yeah. And you also said this too, the allure of 526 was always its stunning simplicity. With one silver bullet, proponents urge the region's problems could be solved, even as the project costs soared from $420 million to $550 million, and then to $725 million, 
526 promoters assured residents that the benefits were real, long-lasting, and financially justified. And I'm wondering, what were those benefits that people really didn't know? Well, you know, for a long time in this country, um, for half a century, we've operated under the proposition that the way to solve traffic problems is build more roads. And, and what we've got is evidence, literally, from every metropolitan area in America that that does not work. Okay. Atlanta is a case in point. Charlotte is a case in point. Charleston is a case in point. Sure. And uh, so the, there, there are different approaches we need to take. It's a more um, nuanced approach. It's a more integrated approach where we focus on tra transit, for example, right. bus rapid transit, even light rail. We're right. reaching a point where we can support that. Okay. People need to be able to bike and walk if they want to, and if they can, right, if, they, if they're physically able to do it right now, that's not really, it's certainly not desirable. Uh, of coming even across the Ashley River Bridge. That huge population west of Ashley, many of those people need to come into town every day and where they work or shop, and they have only one option now, and that is to get in a car and drive in. And that's just not a viable long-term solution for this region. And you talk about the Ashley River Bridge. As you know, they completed, what, I guess, what, six months of the test for the bike plane, pedestrian lane. Uh, where were you emotionally with that? Well, I, my understanding is that there is a point of view, and I, I haven't seen the actual results yet, but that it caused more backups as a result of taking that one lane out of service. Right. You know, I think one thing I would say is, first of all, and I don't, I mean, we still support it, okay. but I think the longer term question is, and it really goes directly to this issue of 526, there are things we need to do that are inexpensive, and then there's some things like replacing the Ashley River bridges that are not going to be inexpensive. They won't be as expensive as 526, right. uh, but they might be a few hundred million dollars. When we do that, we can make sure that we don't make the same mistake again, where people cannot walk, they can't bike, there's no dedicated bus route, so I think, again, thinking about where this funding, this $420 million that was made available in 2007 could right. go, that's one place it could go, mm -hmm. and it really should go. When you look at that part of the city and you think about Charleston, you think, this is not my vision of Charleston. It's a spaghetti of overpasses, of, of, of areas that are essentially devoid of human life except people who are taking their lives in their hands. Um, it's not something we should be proud of, but it is something we can do uh, something about by, by essentially redeveloping it and reconstituting it as a place where humans can actually enjoy. And lastly, in the email you said this, quote, this, I think, was the greatest casualty of the 10-year debate. So what would the debate be in 20 years? Well, let's, I, okay, I hope, and I, let, me, let me use the specifics of the sure. mayor's race. Sure. Not one of the candidates could, could do more than primarily say, my goal is to build 526 right away. And so any, and, and, and by the way, I'm going to do these other things too. That was fine. That was fine. But it was all, 526 really displaced the, um, the conversation that should have been had about what those other things were, mm -hmm. whether it was bus rapid transit, or whether it was connecting neighborhood streets right. or improving intersections. So now, with 526 off the table, we have an opportunity to look 20 years ahead and now try to figure out what a, an intermodal, multimodal, human-scale transportation future looks like. And I think that's really the exciting thing about it. Now, I will say, I'll just caution, we could get sucked back into this. The city could come in and say, well, we're going to submit another application. And, and there's always hope. That is, would be a huge mistake because this thing needs to be put to bed. Uh, we need to move on. In 10 years, and we've got no deployment of the money. We have no uh, relief of congestion. And we have no vision. Now's the time to change that. Mm. Well, Dan Beach, it's always good talking to you. Thank you so Thank much. You. I really appreciate this. Yeah, certainly. Thanks, certainly. Thanks.